Hey everybody, I'm down at Andy Seals Motorcycles again, and this time I'm taking out this 2008 Honda Hornet. Uh, I have somehow never ridden a Hornet. You know, I've, I've reviewed, I think it's 100 bikes or somewhere around that point by this point. Never ridden a Hornet, never had the opportunity. I may have nearly done some of my training on one, but it ended up being a Gladius. But anyway, yeah, this is a prime example of a Honda Hornet from 2008. It's uh, up for sale here for less than three grand, and uh, it's quite tidy. It's got an arrow exhaust on it. It's got a new rad on it, because the old one's a bit, you know, minging looking. So they put a nice new rad on it, which really improved the looks. And yeah, it looks pretty good. So this is going to be quite a bit of fun, because as I say, never ridden a Hornet. 600cc, just my sort of thing. Okay, well, let's get going. <laughs> Interestingly, when I was looking for a second bike when my <laughs> DRZ400 et itself, um, and I was looking for a second bike to do miles on, I did look at Hornets. I looked at lots of other things, and I thought the Hornet was going to be too small for me because, you know, it was renowned for a bit of being a bit of a smaller bike. But it actually isn't that small at all. In fact, if anything, it feels... Well, it feels very similar, actually, to the XJ and the amount of... My XJ6, that is. Yeah, my XJ6. Diversion 2010, just for reference. Uh, it feels quite similar in sort of sizing. About 100 brake horsepower, uh, I saw, and I had a quick look at the specs. But it's an inline four, water-cooled, standard odd bike is about 178 kilos if i remember rightly i'm i literally i look at the spec sheet once just to try and get some of those figures in my head and normally they stick so i hope i got that right this time <laughs> right while i am trying to get out of the city i can talk about things like the ergonomics um at six foot four i'm actually very very comfortable i'm sat upright my arms aren't too far out i would rather the bars are a bit wider um and i'd probably do that if it was my bike but otherwise it's very comfortable the seat feels comfy at this point my knees aren't too bent or anything like that, so, so far, ergonomics, pretty good. But then it's, you know, it's a naked. They tend to be pretty good for uh, many different sizes. Though, again, if you're using this for commuting, these bars would be great to get you between narrow gaps. You know, this is something you could properly thread through a gap. And I mean, even, the, uh, even the mirrors aren't really that far beyond the handlebars. It's almost like they had filtering in mind. <laughs> you can easily short shift this and keep it down in some very low revs just for getting around town. It still, you know, it picks up nicely, but it's very low, just calm. Don't even really feel many vibrations from the engine, to be honest. The clutch isn't super, super light, but it's not heavy. Uh, it's got a nice amount of resistance on it that, as you, you know, as you're letting it out, you don't, you're not jerking it in and out. It's slowly going to release. Are you right there? Milk was a bad decision. Another thing to mention is this bike has got 38,000 miles on the clock, which to some people you might think that's a lot. And uh, when I was younger, I used to think, you know, that was a lot of miles on a bike. It's not at all. <laughs> My XJ6 has got uh, 58,000 miles on it at this point, and it's still sweet as a nut. <laughs> oh, it is too hot to be sat in traffic. Fuel lights flashing now as well. Come on, I just want to get to the petrol station, whack some fuel in this thing and get it into some country roads away from this place. 104C and the fans kicked in, so the fan's working. I have to say, I'm not noticing a huge amount of heat on me from it. Unlike my XJ6, which physically drives all of the heat from the engine into your thighs and scrotum, if you have one. I think because this is a naked, you know, most of the heat's actually getting to escape around and not up through me. Right, we have petrol. We are out of the city and near the country roads. Let's go and have a little bit of fun. Oh, okay. In line four, remember, you need to be in a lower gear with more revs. Red line at 13, up to 15,000 RPM. My XJ6 gets to 12 red line, so. You know, you can't always trust where it's going to actually get to its maximum revs, but I get a feeling this thing's going to scream. And it has more power than my XJ6, so remember that. That's only got 78 brake horsepower and weighs 200 and something kilos wet. This is like 100 brake horsepower and it weighs quite a lot less. I'm letting the traffic go. I am so sick of being stuck behind cars doing like 
half the speed limit. Now, just how quickly will we catch up with them? Very. Oh, now she comes alive a bit. I have to say now, I'm quite amazed at just how happy and um, rideable it is at such low RPMs getting in and out of the city compared to, you know, the fact that it will absolutely scream if I could do more than 45 in a 60 with a person in front of me who keeps braking. I think I'm going to go wherever the rest of you aren't. Okay, well, I have to say, I'm already starting to get these feelings of just, this is just very rideable, very easy to ride and use. Why are you stopped? You see, people like that get to command a couple of tons of steel around. Shouldn't be allowed to command a spoon. What? Why did you do that to me? <laughs> okay. Right, brake checks. Brake check. Okay, this has got ABS by the way. And here we go, 60 mile an hour limit. And I'm doing 33. You shouldn't even be in charge of a napkin! However, let's concentrate on the bike in hand, the Hornet. Turns in nicely. It's quite stiff uh, in the steering, uh, in the sense you, don't, you, know, you can see it. Any movement of the bars really gets the whole bike pivoting around, which is a byproduct of the rake. My God, it's like they've suddenly learned it's actually a 60. I think we should find somewhere to stop and have a little look at this bike closer up. This place will do. Brake test. Good brakes. Good brakes. I don't even have to do much. Oh, that's not a good place. I'm doing 40. <laughs> so yes, basics is standard naked with a lot of fairing for the front. Um, I still prefer the old sort of style with a headlight and you know your dash without all the extra bits but because of the size of this dash it does make sense why they've done it like this and it does give you a little screen so that's quite good it's an extremely metallic like gold bronze color um, everything else on this looks fairly clean I mean there's a few bits on it like the, the rear shocks a bit grubby it's, it's old it's used it works fine it's just aesthetics what I'm talking about here got dual discs on the front, single disc on the rear. This is ABS, as I say, the ABS rings in the middle. Got this carbon fiber hugger on the rear. Actual carbon? Don't know. Now this bike is quick. It really does have to spin up through the revs, but there's a lot of them there and it, it does pick up well. Yeah, as I say, it picks up well. Gearbox is really nice as well, I'll say about that. It's just the engine itself is very smooth. There is a bit of a buzziness to it, and I think that might also be to do with something going on up here that's buzzing, plastics-wise. Yeah, I, I like it. I get it. Now, is it a bike that I'd want to... I mean, I would ride this every day. It'd be perfectly good to get around. I am noticing, though, that I'm a little bit hunched over now. Um, that's putting a little bit of pressure on my shoulders, so I'm tall. If you weren't as tall as me, you probably wouldn't have any of those problems. Okay, 
it's actually kind of weird to get used to how high this revs is. It reminds me in a way of the R6 that you're like, it's braking, right? It's getting really high up there and it's like eight, 9,000 RPM. Oh, I tell you what, should we find out what it's like on a motorway? Because I haven't done that yet. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fine, but we should find out. Okay, so 70 mile an hour, sixth gear, 6,000 RPM, very smooth, very little vibrations from the engine at all. say if you're driving around in a classic sports car on a beautiful sunny day like today top down and you ain't smiling what's wrong with you my dude yeah god damn it's actually a pretty quick bike <laughs> Obviously, you're right out in the wind, so sitting on the motorway, you're being blasted about a bit, but it's a naked. Um, this screen is probably not helping me, it's probably just directing it into my face. It's got good brakes, I'm still comfortable, the seat is comfy. Uh, the only thing about it that I'm not the biggest fan of yet is the sort of the feel of the steering and the handling. It's, I mean, yeah, actually, I would just get used to it, I think. I don't know, I don't know what it is, it's just something that's it's not so i'm not gelling with it perfectly yet but as i say you know, i only get these things for a couple of hours am i a fan of this color i mean if you wanted this color it's a good version of that color i'm not sure i can also say now that although this bike runs around 90 odd uh it's not nearly as hot as being on my xj6 like i said at the beginning it really isn't is that dog okay oh it's outside someone's house it's fine have been run over by a car or something. I'm also glad that I've now ridden one of the older Hornets because if I get to ride one of the newer ones I can make a decent comparison. And here we go, we are back at Andy Sills. So yes, again, huge thanks to Andy Sill down here in uh, South Sea. He has lots of things in here, from brand new 125s and things, to second-hand bikes. Uh, this old Phaser, I believe, something like 1,800 quid, 1,600 quid, something like that. I'm not sure. He's got all sorts of stuff in here. Um, so come down, check him out. He's a very friendly chap. So again, thank you, Andy. And until the next one, bye-bye.